Amidst the pulse of modern life, one silent force propels our world forward, the DC motor. From household appliances to electric vehicles, its impact is everywhere. In today's era of innovation, DC motors drive our tools, power our cars, and even shape our renewable energy landscape. Efficient, reliable, and sustainable, these motors are the backbone of our technological advancements. Join us as we uncover the secrets behind this essential component of our modern world. Before discussing the DC motors working, let's learn some basic concepts of magnets and electricity. This is a magnet, also called a permanent magnet. It has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. If we take another magnet, we can see that similar poles repel and opposite poles attract each other. Let's drill a hole in this magnet and put it onto something that allows it to spin. Then when we bring another magnet near it, our spinning magnet will immediately line up with the fixed magnet in such a way that similar poles repel and opposite poles attract. Now switch out the magnet, opposite poles attract, and similar poles repel. If we keep switching out the fixed magnet, then the spinning magnet will keep spinning. But we can't turn these magnets off which makes it difficult to control, these magnets have magnetic domains organized in a similar direction. Now this is a metal bolt which is not a magnet, but it also has magnetic domains that are not organized or we can say they are facing in random directions. When we wrap this bolt with a conductive coil and pass an electricity current through it, its magnetic domains become organized in a similar direction and act as a magnet. This type of magnet is called an electromagnet, we can control this magnet by turning it on or off, increasing or decreasing the strength of the magnet, and so on. In an electromagnet, the current flow is in one direction, and when we change the current flow, the electromagnet's polarity also changes. Here, for example, when we switch the circuit's battery, the current flow changes, and the electromagnet's polarity also reverses. Now let's replace that spinning permanent magnet with this electromagnet. The role of both magnets is the same but the thing to be noted is that, now we don't have to switch out the fixed magnet. We can just switch out the electromagnet wires to change the magnet's polarity and it will continue spinning. In reality, these wires will obstruct the spinning of the magnet but that is not the important thing here. Now to make it more efficient we will add another magnet on the other side. Both of these side magnets work together to spin the electromagnet. This is the very basics of a DC motor. But we need to make a few improvements in the design like, the sidebar magnets can be replaced with stronger curved magnets and we can use a metal frame instead of a bolt and wire. This time when we connect the wire to the loop, we can think of the magnet as a flat magnet. Now like before, the metal loop will spin until the opposite poles are lined up. But isn't it quite a lot of work to switch the wire manually? To make it automatic we will add a ring called a commutator with gaps on opposite sides. Now to connect the wire and the commutator we will add two brushes which will slide along the commutator, the brushes are spring-loaded so that they always make contact with the commutator. The current will flow from the wire to the brush, commutator, metal loop, commutator, brush, and then to the wire again. Now we have our electromagnet and the armature spins. As we come around this time, the brushes will switch contact to the other side of the commutator ring. And remember, there are two brushes so this is happening on both sides. Before the switch, the current is flowing this way. After the brushes switch sides, the current will flow the other way. This means the electromagnet switches polarity, which will cause the armature to keep spinning. This commutator ring does the same thing as switching the wires. The spinning will continue until the battery is connected. So far, we've only used one loop in the armature. This will cause our motor to have an irregular speed and in fact, we could get stuck in this position with the brushes halfway between commutator segments. We can split the commutator ring and then add another loop. So the brushes are in contact with these commutator segments, which turns on this electromagnet, which causes it to start spinning. Once we get to here, the brushes switch contact to the next pair of the commutator segments, which means this loop turns off and the next loop turns on. Now this electromagnet wants to spin. The brushes switch contact and the next loop turns on. This keeps happening as our motor spins. 
some electric motors will add many loops to the armature. This ensures that there will be a continuous spinning motion on the motor. We can improve the spinning of the motor. Electromagnets are stronger when we wrap more wires around the metal bolt and it's also true when each of our armature loops is made of many wires. The motor will have stronger electromagnets which means it will spin faster. The part that doesn't move is called the stator. In this case, it's the two permanent magnets on the side. The armature in the middle is also called a rotor and this is the part that spins. The axle goes through the middle of the rotor and then sticks out the back of the motor. And this is how a DC motor works. It converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. If you learned something new from this video then make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.